Father in heaven, thank you for this day here on this Wednesday in the middle of the week that we can come together to hear a study from your word. Father, pray that you be with the words that Gary speaks to us, that he has studied on and is bringing to us. Let us be able to take from it and apply it to our lives and just show your love to those around us and those all around the world. Father, pray that you be with those that are sick and those that uh, just need healing for any reason. Pray that you be with them and help them out and let them be able to be healed and be able to reach out to us if there's anything that we can do. Father, pray that you be with uh, us throughout the rest of this week and be with us as we look forward to meeting again with brothers and sisters in Christ on Sunday morning to worship you. Pray all this, these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, and thank you for being with us this evening as we continue to take a look at Paul's epistles, what they have to teach us about being the body of Christ. We started with the book of Romans, and we saw in that book that one thing that helps us be a functioning, united body of Christ is that we conform together. We work things out, and when we get together, and we conform together. In 1 Corinthians, we saw that we need to submit together and be willing to put the interests of the other person above our own. We need to submit together. We skipped 2 Corinthians and went to Galatians last time where we saw that as a, a functioning united body of Christ we need to carry our burdens together. And tonight I'd like to take a look at 2 Corinthians and what it says about being comforted together. The reason that we switched those around was because James uh, was preparing a sermon for this past Sunday dealing with the idea of comfort from 2 Corinthians. If you did not watch that, that show, you have not seen it yet, that, that sermon, uh, please go to our website and locate it and watch that excellent, excellent sermon about being comforted based on 2 Corinthians. James did a very good job of preparing and presenting that lesson. And today, tonight I would like to continue that thought of being a united, functioning body of Christ by comforting together. We need to understand that we are comforted in order to comfort others, and that was one of James's point, is that we're comforted by each other. And each of us receives comfort, not just for our own self, but for sharing with other people. We're comforted so that we can comfort others. Paul says that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, 
so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. But if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. Or if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is, an, which is effective in the patient enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. And our hope for you is firmly grounded, knowing that as you are sharers of our sufferings, so also you are sharers of our comfort. For we do not want you to be unaware, brethren, of our affliction which came, came to us in Asia, that we were burdened excessively beyond our strength, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves, in order that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great, great a peril of death, and will deliver us, he on whom we have set our hope, and he will yet deliver us, you also joining and helping us through your prayers, that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the favor bestowed upon us through the prayers of many. Paul points out that he has gone through many afflictions, and he has been carried through those afflictions so that he can comfort other people. There are other times when Paul was receiving comfort, and he received that comfort so that he could pass it on to others. We are comforted in order to comfort one another. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13, Paul says, But having the same spirit of faith, according, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore also we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the grace which is spreading to more and more people may cause the giving of thanks to abound to the glory of God. Therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary, light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We comfort so that we are comforted so that we can comfort each other. And it's wonderful to have a body of people who have the same priorities. We need to have spiritual priorities. Our focus needs to be on heaven. And that allows us to comfort each other because we're looking to go to the same place. It's reassuring to know that Jesus has our back and God has our back. And they want us to spend eternity in heaven. And we share that comfort with each other as a body of Christ. We are able to help comfort each other by forgiving one another. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5, Paul points out, But if any has caused sorrow, he has caused sorrow not to me, but in some degree, in order not to say too much to all of you. Sufficient for such a one is this punishment which was inflicted by the majority, so that on the contrary you should rather forgive and comfort him, lest somehow such a one be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. Therefore I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. For to this end also I wrote that I might put you to the test, whether you are, you are obedient in all things. Uh, but whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For indeed what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, I did it for your sakes in the presence of Christ, in order that no advantage be taken of us by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. In Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, he talks about a man who is living in a sinful relationship he encourages the church, the church to put him out of their fellowship so that he will see the, the danger of what he is doing. And apparently that man did repent and did come around. So Paul needs to tell the same congregation in the second letter that now they need to forgive him and to comfort him. We comfort one another when we are willing to forgive one another. We are comforted when we have confidence, and our confidence is toward God through Jesus. There are a lot of things going on in the world. But we're not going to find comfort in those things because they're not spiritual things. True comfort comes through Christ toward God. In Second Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 4, we read, And such confidence we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God, who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. One of the things that really causes us to be upset and to not be very comfortable is when we rely on our own power. And we need to realize that our adequacy does not come from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God through Jesus. 
In the next chapter, chapter 4, beginning in verse 7, we find that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. We have confidence through Jesus toward God. Paul continues that thought in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 17 and 18, where he simply says, But he who boasts, let him boast in the Lord. For not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commands. We can have confidence, and that gives us comfort, because our confidence is not in our own ability. Our confidence is because of the help that God gives us through Jesus. And that's why we find comfort as we preach Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the first six verses, Paul points out, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Isn't that comforting that we don't preach ourselves, we don't preach some human, we preach Jesus Christ. We preach ourselves as his bondservants. That's because we are ambassadors of Christ. We work together with Christ, and that is a very comforting job assignment. Paul begins this discussion in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. He says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were entreating through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And then Paul carries this discussion over into 2 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning in verse 1 where he says, in working together with him, we also urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, at the acceptable time I listened to you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no cause for offense in anything, in order that the ministry may not be discredited, but in everything commending ourselves as servants of God, in much endurance, in afflictions, in hardships, in distresses, and Paul goes on to describe some of the things that he has experienced. But isn't it encouraging and comforting to know that we have been chosen as ambassadors of Christ, working together with Christ? We need to be reminded that everything that we do is done in the sight of God. And that's also encouraging to us and comforting to us to know that he is the one who's watching over us. It doesn't matter who else is looking on, who else is watching. All that matters is that everything that we're done is in the sight of God, and that gives us comfort. In chapter 2, verse 17, Paul says, We are not like many, peddling the word of God, but as from sincerity, but as from God, we speak in Christ in the sight of God. And a few verses later, beginning in verse 19, he says, All this time you have been thinking that we are defending ourselves to you. Actually, it is in the sight of God that we have been speaking in Christ. And all for your upbuilding, beloved. For I am afraid that perhaps when I come I may find you to be not what I wish, and may be found by you to not be what you wish. That perhaps there may be strife, jealousy, angry tempers, disputes, slanders, gossip, arrogance, disturbances. I am afraid that when I come again my God may humiliate me before you, and I may mourn over many of those who have sinned in the past, and not repented of the impurity, immorality, and sensuality which they have practiced. We need to be reminded that everything that we're done is in the sight of God. Nothing is hidden. 
And it's comforting to know that, that God is the one that watches and he's the one that we need to please. We don't need to please man. We don't need to please each other. As we work to be a, a united functioning body of Christ by finding comfort together and comforting each other, we receive a certain result, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning in verse 11. His conclusion is, finally, brethren, rejoice, be made complete, be comforted, be like-minded, live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Way back in chapter 2, beginning in verse 14, Paul says, But thanks be to God, who always leads us in his triumph in Christ, and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved, and among those who are perishing. To the one, an aroma from death to death, and to the other, an aroma from life to life. And who is adequate for these things? For we are not like many, peddling the word of God, but as from sincerity, but as from God, we speak Christ in the sight of God. Isn't that a beautiful passage? Isn't that a comforting passage to know that, that God, in his triumph in Jesus, leads us, manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place, and that we are a fragrance of Christ to God, to everyone, to those who believe and to those who don't believe. This week, let's make it our goal to comfort one another and to be comforted and find the right kind of comfort. And let's try to do these three things during this upcoming week. Let's seek comfort in the right places. When people in the world seek comfort, where do they look? And James had some real good examples that he got from uh, surveying his friends. Uh, we seek comfortable comfort in our clothing or in our surroundings. Uh, on a deeper sense, some people seek comfort in drugs, in alcohol, and they think they're going to find comfort somehow by using drugs, and they're always greatly disappointed. Many people seek comfort in toxic relationships, and they don't realize that those toxic relationships are making them more uncomfortable instead of more comfortable. Uh, we need to seek comfort in the right places, and the things that we've talked about, we need to seek comfort in God and the comfort that he gives and the comfort that he allows us to give each other. The second thing that we want to do is to extend comfort to each other. One of the lessons that we've learned over the last few months is that there's a reason, there are probably many reasons, but there's one reason why God wants us to meet together and be a united functioning body. We can go through the worship service uh, apart. We can observe communion apart. We can watch services online. And if we have to, that's the best we can do. But that's not God's plan. God's plan is for us to come together as a group of people. And it's only then that we can develop the kind of relationship that we're willing to extend comfort to one another. And we know what's going on in each other's lives. And so we appreciate God's plan for us to be a body. And let's extend comfort to each other. And at the same time, let's be willing to accept comfort from one another. Let's not let pride get in the way. And if, if we need comfort, uh, let's accept that comfort. In our discussion Sunday evening, Jason and I mentioned that, that sometimes we need to learn when to, to back off, uh, to not insert ourselves where it's not going to do any good. So we need to be sensitive to other people. But we do need to be available. We need to be ready to comfort each other with silence if necessary, to just sit with with someone and listen to them and sometimes that's the best possible kind of comfort but let's be willing to accept comfort and find opportunities to comfort each other there's no more comforting rela relationship than being in christ and being part of his body if you haven't become part of that body uh, we would love to sit down with you with your bible and open your bible and see what your relationship is with the body of christ what your relationship is with Jesus himself and with God, what your relationship is with the Bible and with the church and with salvation. And we would greatly enjoy sitting down with you and opening your Bible and see what it has to say about you and your relationship with these important things. Perhaps you have done that and you've studied that and you've, you realize 
that you want to be a body, a part of the body of Christ, you understand that you are baptized into his body and that you need to be buried with him in baptism so that you can be part of that spiritual body. Please contact us so that we can help make that possible for you. And if you have done that and you're struggling along the way, uh, maybe you have not lived up to being part of the body. Maybe you're seeking true comfort and you've been looking for it in all the wrong places, but you want the comfort, the true comfort that comes from God through Jesus. Please let us know so that we can pray with you, sit down with you and, and discuss your situation with you and be whatever help we can. Uh, we want to be a united functioning body of Christ and please let us know if we can help uh, help accomplish that in any way in your life. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the comfort that comes only from you, that although we as humans try to comfort each other from time to time, we realize that we come up short and the best thing that we can do is to share the comfort that you have given to us and share that comfort with other people and that the true comfort comes only from you through Jesus. It is so comforting to know that you have given us a plan of salvation that gives us assurance of eternal life in heaven with you. And no matter what happens in this life, we are comforted by the fact that we have the promise, the security of a home in heaven with you for eternity. We pray that you would do, help us to do what we can to comfort each other, to preach the gospel, the gospel that is so comforting, and help us to do that. Help us to be willing to give comfort and accept comfort, and help us to be a united, functioning body to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.